Welcome to our lecture online. The next thing we should look at and probably review because we should have seen this before somewhere is the relative phase difference between the current and the voltage across our three components, the resistor, the inductor and the capacitor. So let's first take a look at the resistor. Remember what we're ultimately trying to do is to come up with a good second order differential equation for the KVL, for the Kirchhoff's voltage loop uh, equation such that we can then solve the equation and find a good way of illustrating or at least expressing the current as a function of time in a circuit like this. But first of all let's take a look at the phase difference between the voltage and the current across our three components. It turns out across the resistor there's no phase difference whatsoever. When current reaches a maximum value so does the voltage across the resistor. When the current goes to zero so does the voltage. When the current goes to the maximum negative value, so does the voltage as well. There is zero phase difference between the current and the voltage across the resistor. Now across an inductor, notice that the voltage rise comes first, then the current follows later. There is typically a 90 degree difference between that when we talk about the inductor by itself. So if you have an RL circuit, a resistor and inductor circuit, this will always be the case. The voltage will lead the current by 90 degrees, so we can say voltage leads current by 90 degrees when we're talking about an inductor. So the voltage goes high first, then 90 degrees later in the, in the phase, then the current goes high. The voltage goes to zero at the time that the current reaches a maximum. The voltage will be a maximum negative value when the current goes to zero. The voltage will go back to zero when the current reaches a maximum negative value and so forth. So the voltage always leads the current by 90 degrees. With a capacitor, it's the other way around. Notice that we first have the current reach a maximum value before the voltage reaches a maximum value. The reason for that, of course, is that the voltage across the capacitor increases as the charge on the capacitor increases. So as more and more current flows the, into the capacitor, more and more charge builds up, and so the voltage follows after the current. The voltage, therefore, lags the current by 90 degrees. Now it turns out that when we have an RCL circuit, the difference in phase between the current and voltage in every circuit, in every R RLC circuit, depends upon the relative size of the inductor and the capacitor. The phase angle between I and V in an RCL circuit depends on the size of those components. If the effect of the inductor is larger than the effect of the capacitor, and of course this is a simplistic way of looking at it because it can also depend on the frequency. And, so maybe I'll add that, and it also depends on the frequency, also depends on the frequency omega because as the current changes more quickly then the inductor has a much bigger effect on the circuit than the capacitor. If the current changes more slowly then the capacitor has a much bigger effect than the inductor. So the relative phase angle between the current and the voltage depends on the size of the inductor and the capacitor. It also depends on the value of the frequency or the angle of frequency inside the circuit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to it. But at least this way we know that there's going to be voltage rises and drops across the three components at various stages of the current changing through the circuit which will then add to our ability to understand what this equation actually means. So once we have an understanding of that, this equation will take a lot, will have a lot more meaning for us and will understand the polarity across each of the three components at any point in time as the circuit oscillates back and forth because that helps us understand that equation, the KVL equation. So here we have a good overview over each individual component and the phase differences between the current and the voltage before we now take a look at each individual component inside the RCL circuit to see how it actually operates as far as the polarity of the voltage depending upon what's happening with the current. So stay tuned and we'll get into the details of that, of that now.